Hello viewers, today we're going to be cleaning an NEC telephone. This is a single line telephone and the model number is DTR-1-1 and I believe the WH is for the white and this was made in the September of 2007. I did partially start this, so I cleaned the number off the top I couldn't do that on video because that number I believe is still active and I started using Goo Gone and it wasn't working so I had to use Goof Off which tends to damage the surface that it's on and it did kind of do that here a little bit but I think there was no other options so anyways this phone is pretty dirty it definitely needs a good cleaning it looks like the cord comes out like this and the cord is in really good condition so we'll clean that up and keep that and then the handset I remember this being a little weird we used to have these phones at work for a long time and they were good phones the only issue I remember having with them was on occasion the some of the buttons would stick and what you'd have to do is take this cover off because they would the uh, what would happen is you, you would get dirt in in between here and then it would stick to the buttons and so that was the only real issue I remember having with these and even that was a pretty rare occurrence I think over all the years I was there only once did it happen in the call center okay so that's that we got the other part we can clean that, clean that, clean that as well. The handset looks like it has one screw holding it in place. Let's see if it really is that easy. Something tells me it's probably not, but you never know. does not immediately seem like it wants to come apart. There's probably some tabs throughout here. Let's see. There's a big tab up here at the top. I'm trying to figure out. Looks like it just goes up and out like that. Okay, so there's that. So there's a weight in the handset, which is nice. It comes right out washer down there, we'll take that out, and I guess that can stay. So there's a lot of weight in this hand, so we got this metal piece, the weight up there. This speaker is very heavy, so it's a pretty nice hand set. Okay, now for the base, I'm going to take this wall mount piece out, and on the back, I'm going to remove the wall plate. I'm going to put this into service after I'm done with the video here and I'm going to have it hanging on the wall so I think this needs to be turned around I believe the way this works is uh, is it stuck on there I think the way this works is You know what? I don't really know how this works. The 
because it looks like there's a screw hole there, but it can't align. Oh, here we go. It's got to sit in there like that, and then it aligns like that. Okay, that makes sense. So I have a nice, actually it'd be pretty much flat up against the wall, pretty straight. Okay. So that's fine. We'll do that afterwards. Uh, it looks like there are an additional three screws here that we need to remove. very easily. Okay, in this case we have our two phone jacks here which appear to be secured with some plastic tabs so I think, I think if we just separate those tabs this will pull right out. I don't think it really matters which side these go on because ultimately they do the same thing. base, I'm not sure it's really worth getting wet and cleaning. I think we're going to not clean the base because it's not that dirty. Now we have a plethora of screws in here. We have some screws for the speaker, the ringer. That bit is not going to work. I do that one. but it's not quite right. I don't want to strip any screws here. Here we go. This is the correct one. Okay, so that's free now. This will just slip right out, I think. Yep. And then we have one, two, three, four screws on the board. Five, there's one under this capacitor here. Okay, let's see, this should lift off now, I think. Okay, so that's off. Uh, let's see here, this is a little bit dusty. We'll go ahead and clean that. Um, this is pretty clean. I think we're going to, well, it's a little bit of weirdness here and there. I guess we'll clean that off till, just for good measure. The buttons are, oh, this has got to come off it or whatever that is. The buttons are all one piece, which is nice, so that'll be easy to clean, no fiasco there. Yeah, okay. So that's it. That's everything we wanted to take apart. Now we'll go over to the cleaning area and get this stuff cleaned up.
I previously said I was going to clean this because there were some shiny spots but I think that's just how it is because upon closer investigation the whole thing is shiny sands where the dial pad sits and it's not sticky and it doesn't come off so I think it's just like that by design so I'm gonna leave it alone especially since all the buttons are working with proper sensitivity that's one of those things I'd rather just leave alone if it's working all the parts have been washed and they're cleaned up very very nicely looks pretty much new very nice okay so what we're going to do now is put the buttons back in and then we'll put the main board back in and there's little clips here on the side that it needs to sit under Okay, now we will put the speaker back on, and this, this solves the mystery here. This is uh, very interesting. They must use this case for a plethora of different models because as you can see, a lot of the buttons are not even being used in this case, and what I would typically expect to be a speaker in a microphone hole the ringer is going out the smaller hole and this is doing absolutely nothing. So this must be a shell that they used for quite a few different models. This doesn't seem to really lock in place or anything, it just sits there and is held by the screws. Okay. Ah, jeez, I forgot to put the conductive material back in there. That wasn't going to work at all. Okay, now the buttons will work. They all feel correct. Okay, and then we have 
this. I'm not really sure what purpose this serves, but I'll put it back. There's this piece of paper here. I really have no idea what that's for, but that's that. And now we have this. What the heck is this? I don't think this has anything to do with this situation. Where did that come from? Okay, so we're going to sit this back in here. And I believe it was in there like this, but it doesn't really matter which one is on what side. The functionality, I believe, will be the same. Okay. I think that's it. Missing something, we're missing this light. That's got to go in there first. Does that go into the main board? Yeah, I think it's going too well. Needless to say, this is the first time I've taken one of these apart, and it is certainly showing. Okay, I'm not really sure how this sits in here. Can't go like that, so it's going to have to go like that, even though it doesn't really... That doesn't make any sense, because there's no way that this is going to close. I mean, it's, it's two centimeters up. Okay, just had to sit down in there a little bit further. Okay, take three. I'm going to push that capacitor back down because that's the way it was when I opened it up. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or not. I don't think it really matters unless it's a physical construction uh, limitation or constraint. Okay, maybe now 
I can close this up for the final time. Okay, I think that's together. Buttons feel correct. Seems to be working. Oh, on this one the data jack is... oh. I thought it was like a block the off thing, but no, that's fine. Okay. So we have... We had our three screws on the back. One was there, one was here, and one was over here. And it's the wrong bit, so we're going to stop using it. on the way it was because I'm going to do a separate video for hanging it on the wall. Okay, so after that we have to get all the junk off of there that got on. We have the piece of, of paper and then we have, which covers up the holes, and then we have the the uh, front piece here, which isn't looking too hot anymore at the top because I had to clean the number off of there, but otherwise, you know, it's just fine. Okay, let's get the heat. Okay, <laughs> I thought I'd missed another piece. Um, let's get the handset back together. This was in the bottom there. And this seems to be largely just held in by the uh, the uh, plastic here, and I think it goes this way. Nope, it goes the other way. through here and then the, this goes down there like that which is kind of nice I don't know if that really you know keeps the string off the cord at all but maybe it does it certainly looks a little bit nicer and then this will go into the base Okay, so that's it. It's all reassembled. It looks very nice now, very clean. It almost looks brand new. Let's get this testing line plugged in and let's call it up. Make sure it's working. It is working, and I found out that this has three different ringers Goose, goose, one, two, three. Okay, it is working. I recently found out that it does in fact have three different ringers. You press the program key, 
and then I think it's the pound key and then the number, some some sequence like that will make it change different ringers. It's got three different ringers and then three different volumes for each, for a total of nine ringer settings. Okay. It seems like it works just fine. Let's make sure the buttons work. Yep. It is the working. So that was a very successful cleaning. Looks very nice now. <laughs>